coming out tonight. Um, this is a regular meeting of the Allendale Land Use Board at which formal action will be taken on the items listed on the agenda and upon any other matters which may properly come before the land use. The requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied through posting on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and on the borough website and by publication in the record on January 28, 2023, with copies being sent to the Ridgewood News. Certain agenda items will be open to the public for comment and or testimony, and the board will advise when the pub advise the public when such matters are open for comment and or testimony. Again, thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to start with a salute to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Linda, please, can I have a roll call? Chris Jones, Bergen. Here. Board member Here. Board member Kishner and Councilman Delaware are both absent. Board member Dallas. Here. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, we're going to let this meeting keep moving on. We want to go into the approval of the minutes from the July 19th, 2023 regular board meeting of the land use, uh, regular board meeting of this uh, committee. Um, I read them. There were, I think we were okay. I'm, I might have made some changes and gave them to you, minor stuff. But um, that's it. So uh, if there's no changes, can I have somebody uh, offer for approval, please? Make a motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Linda, please. Vice, Vice Chairwoman Bergen. Yes. Board Member Petrino. Yes. Board Member Dalla. Yes. Chairman Salito. Yes. Yes. Open the vote, Dalla. Yes. Open the vote. Yes. Okay. So I'd like to move into the first agenda item, please. And the first agenda item is file number LUB 2023-08, Allendale Senior Housing Court, Seaback Court, Allendale, New Jersey, block 1708, lots one and nine for preliminary and final site plan approval. Um, because of this application, thank you, Amy. John, thank you. And uh, Joe DeLuisa, who's not here, would have to recuse himself anyway, so. Um, yeah, move on. We can just go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Whitaker, sir. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Bruce Whitaker from the firm of McDonald Whitaker representing the uh, the applicant. Um, and this is, as you stated, an application for preliminary and site plan approval. Um, you're all very familiar with Seaback Court. The applicant is proposing to extend the private roadway and to construct two additional buildings, uh, each to house two new units. For additional senior citizen housing, recognizing that this is uh, all senior citizen housing on Seabeck Court. Uh, in addition, the applicant is going to propose nine parking spaces and an asphalt walkway to, uh, to the existing walkway uh, at the end of Seabeck Court. Um, this just historically was an area that was um, designated for redevelopment for senior citizen housing. The zone was created. The zone is known as the SC Redevelopment Area Senior Housing uh element and for the purposes of constructing senior citizen housing uh the zone provides for the density of 10 units per acre and 6.5 acres currently exists and based upon the applicant's proposal the density will be 8.13 typically this is where an attorney would say in addition to preliminary and final site plan approval we'd also be requesting certain variants or waiver relief but the interesting part about this zone is that there are no zoning standards uh, as far as setbacks are concerned, other than the density which we meet. So we don't have any bulk set standards to adhere to. Um, we've researched it, could not find it, and we've had confirmation and acknowledgement from your engineer as well as from the town itself and with Mr. Bottom. So with that said, uh, it is merely for preliminary and final site plan approval. And the purpose of our testimony tonight will be to show you what we're doing, and we'll take you through the engineering aspects with Mr. Halls, who prepared it, 
and then we will take you through Mary Fitzpatrick, our architect of the uh, style of the buildings that's being proposed. Um, so as you know, the master plan that you have encourages senior citizen housing. We're going to have Mr. Barra speak first just about the necessity for it uh, and just put on the record a few facts about the uh, proposal itself. And then we'll move on to engineering and to architectural testimony. We've had the benefit of your engineer's report. We can stipulate that we can meet all of those requirements. And frankly, based upon the report that we received, Mr. Halls will testify uh, and basically follow the uh, outline that Mike prepared that's in his letter as to uh, the information that you're requesting. Unless there's any questions of me, this is an overview of the application. I'll call Vincent Barra. Thank you, sir. Any questions for me to be on the board before we proceed? Okay. Just okay. for the record, uh, thank you for Mr. Whitaker started. I should have put on the record that uh, I have reviewed the uh, publication and the notice of public hearing. Uh, which has been presented and the mailings and they are all in order. And uh, so the board does have jurisdiction to proceed tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Barry, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth through the course of this application? I do. Thank you. Mayor, welcome. Mr. Good Barry, evening. <laughs> Barry, if you would just give the benefit of the board your position with the applicant. Um, I am the president of Allendale Housing, Inc. Um, and as you may be aware, Allendale Housing Inc. built 37 special needs houses in Allendale. We continue to operate them, own and operate them since 2010. At the end of last year, the mayor and council came to us, the board of Allendale Housing Inc., and said, we'd like you to take over senior housing in Allendale. So our board met and we decided to accept the invitation of the mayor and council. So we took over Allendale Senior Housing, which was Allendale Senior Housing Corp which operates the senior housing and Allendale Urban Renewal, which owns the property and the buildings. So uh, Allendale Housing Inc. essentially is the overarching uh, owner of both Allendale Senior Housing Corp and Allendale Urban Renewal. And as president of this corporation, nonprofit that it is, you have at this point, are familiar with uh, the plans that have been submitted in the application. Yes, I do. And you're very familiar with the need for senior citizen housing in the borough of Allendale. Yes. Just give us a little background as to what exists there now and what's, uh, what the needs are. We have uh, 16 one bedroom units. And the first thing when we took over, we were given the corporate records, the accounting records, and we were given a list, a list, a waiting list of 170 people who are waiting for senior housing in Allendale. Uh, many of the people on that list have died in the past. They're still active, 170 people. But many have died. Many have gone on to nursing homes because we simply don't have the ability to provide more housing. So when we saw this, immediately our board said, what can we do? So we looked at the site and we looked at the end of the street and we said we can put, we brought in architects or engineers and we and we decided that we could easily put in two buildings, each building, a continuation essentially of the existing buildings that are there. Each of these, there are eight buildings. Each building is subdivided. There are duplexes, two one bedroom in, in a building. So we added a build that we were proposing to add a building on the end and on the cross the street, a similar duplex building of two one bedrooms on the other side of the street. So it would just be a continuation of the two rows of senior housing that are there now. That's the most we could fit, um, and uh, we'll continue to look for more need because the need just continues to grow and grow in Allendale as it as it is throughout the state of New Jersey. And so this would be conducted and operated similar to what's being done for the last 25 years? It will be identical in terms of operation uh, to what's been going on now since it was originally built in 1994 or 1995. And it's correct to say that the borough of Allendale administratively uh, has encouraged this and is actually providing some financial support for it. Yes. Is that correct? The borough has been encouraged when we went to them. They said they were in full support. Uh, and in fact, uh, the mayor and council have provided us with some funding to help with the construction. Uh, that came out of the Allendale Housing Trust Fund. Thank you. That's all I have. Is there any questions? I don't have any board members, please. 
Anyone okay. from the public uh, has any Thank questions you. for Mr. Barra? Okay. Seeing none, we'll bring it back. That's easy. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. And next witness, David Hall. Well, is writing. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the course of this application. I do. Name and address for the record. Uh, it's David Halls, H A L S. Uh, business address is uh, 111 Littleton Road, Parsippany, New Jersey. Mr. Halls, you're a licensed engineer in the state of New Jersey. Is that correct? Yes, I'm a licensed engineer, uh, land surveyor, and planner in the state of New Jersey. Uh, and you had the benefit of being qualified as an expert witness in the past before this board, as well as other municipal land use boards. Uh, that's correct. I've testified before this board before, and I've been accepted as a witness in more than 100 municipalities in the state of New Jersey. I and think so he'd be so qualified in the field to be testifying to and be able to order and provide a professional opinion to those people. Accepted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Paul, you are familiar with the uh, site itself? Yes, I am. And you prepared the plans that were submitted with the application? Yes, uh, I prepared the plans entitled uh, Preliminary and Final Site Plan, Block 1708, Lots yeah. 1 and 9, Seaback Court for Allendale Senior Housing. And it has a date of July. They are part of the application. They are part of the application, and let's, let's you're going to refer yeah, to these. Look at this one at day one, because right. this is a colorized version of that one. That's correct. What I've colored here is the uh, existing, a portion of the existing site. Uh, this is uh, specifically what I've mapped on the board is the survey of the property, which is, uh, I believe, it's sheet six of six on the site on the uh, site plan application. And uh, what I've colored on the plan is uh, just the right hand side or the northerly side of the property. And for reference, what we're looking at is the property is located on uh, off to the end of First Street, and it uh, has currently Seaback Court, which extends through the property. And before I go too far, should I mark that as a date and time or, or date and uh, number? On it? I would just mark that as A1. A1. Yeah. So both, what I'd like you to do is just explain to the board what the existing conditions are and then take us through what is being proposed. All right. As I mentioned before, uh, for orientation purposes, uh, First Street is on the far left-hand side of the drawing. Uh, that is on the southerly side of the property. The property is, uh, I don't know what I'd describe it. It's not quite rectangular, but it has a finger of the property that goes out to Mallinson uh, Street. Uh, Mallinson Street is on the bottom portion of the drawing itself. The property is uh, 107,269 107, square feet or uh, 2.46 acres. You'll see on the property uh, through the middle of the site is Seaback Court. It ends in a hammerhead uh, turnaround area at the end of the street and it has several parking spaces uh, also located at the end of the street. There are eight buildings, four on the upper portion of the drawing, which is on the western side and four on the lower portion or the uh, eastern side of the drawing. Each of those buildings are very similar in size. They're all uh, two family dwellings. I'll, I'll refer to them as, as they're, they're 16 one bedroom units, senior housing units that are on the property. Uh, seven of the buildings, uh, or I, actually it's 15, 15 of the units have uh, driveways. And the last building on the on the right, uh, which used to be actually a community room, uh, that does not have a driveway. That has uh, parking spaces off the Hammerhead itself. Uh, the adjoining the property on Mallinson Street, we're uh, adjoining the rear yards of the single family homes that are on that portion of the property. We're also adjoining the rear yards on the northerly side of uh, housing that's uh, single family houses on uh, Allendale Avenue. And on the western side or the uh, top of the page is the, the town park uh, and ball fields that are there. From uh, Mallinson, there's an existing pathway 
uh, the uh, walk, uh, walkway from Mallinson through uh, into the parking area. Uh, it's colored in gray. You can see it on the, where it's in that portion that's shaded where it's located. There is also a water line that uh, extends from uh, Mallinson through the property, extends all the way through to the ball fields, and also connects into the water main system that's on Seaback Court. The property is relatively flat, I'll refer to it as. It's gently sloping from north to south. Uh, but uh, in relative speaking, late terms, I would call it a re relatively flat piece of property. Um, our proposal Thank you. Very good. This is a uh, colored uh, uh, sheet, uh, two of six of the site plan. Uh, our proposal is to add two houses, uh, two one bedroom, uh, uh, two two family units, I guess I'll refer to them as, uh, four one bedroom units uh, at the end of the cul-de-sac. One building will be on the northern, uh, on the western side of the street, and one building will be on the eastern side of the street. We reduce the hammerhead slightly, and we also add, uh, oh, I did not mention, there's uh, there's approximately four parking spaces at the end of the street right now. And uh, what we're doing is we're adding uh, 10 parking spaces or designating 10 parking spaces when we're finished. Uh, so we uh, transfer those four spaces into the site and then we add additional parking. So it gives us 10 parking spaces at the end of the hammerhead. Uh, Orientation wise, uh, the houses are very similar to the current setbacks that are uh, on the property itself. There are some areas in the set on the property on the uh, western side. The first building on the left has a setback of uh, approximately 10 feet to the property line. While we don't have any zoning requirements, we are trying to match as close as we can to what the existing zoning or restrictions there are on the property. And then what we've done is uh, we've situated the buildings in a fashion where they best fit into the site and in the into the parking areas that are located on the property. We do maintain that existing pathway from uh, Mallinson Street to the end of the parking area. We have to realign that uh, because of the orientation of the new building. The last building uh, of the existing buildings of those uh, eight buildings uh, where it used to be a community room we have to rework the sidewalk to make that unit ADA accessible, and we're trying to do that. And then our two new buildings themselves are completely ADA uh, accessible buildings. So they will have uh, no uh, steps or uh, lips into the building itself. So they'll be, and they'll be fully wheelchair access into the buildings. We have one handicapped stall that is located with the building on the uh, southerly side of the, uh, on the I saw the side, north is to the right on the drawing. On the uh, easterly side uh, building or the last building on the on the bottom side of the drawing, that uh, the parking space directly in front of us uh, is the handicapped parking stall or ADA parking stall. And then there's nine parking stalls at the end that, that head in towards the face towards the north. We are adding, uh, filling in uh, with uh, Arborvitae trees, green giant arborvitaes, in an effort to screen the cars, uh, the headlights from the cars themselves, and and uh, screen the uh, adjoining properties. Uh, we do we are proposing to fill in uh, the rear. Um, I, how do I describe this? It's the uh, two adjoining uh, most northerly properties on Mallinson Street, the rear yards. There's some gaps in the existing landscaping. And we're proposing to fill in that landscaping with the arborvitae trees there. And then we're also along the northerly property line, we're filling in that whole uh, row along there with the arborvitae trees and that. What are you proposing as far as the size of those arborvitae at this point in time? Uh, those are eight to 10 foot high arborvitae. So we're, we're uh, proposing to, uh, which is a taller uh, tree in an effort to screen the trees themselves. And uh, we're planting them in the effort to, uh, we've selected the trees, number one, is they're fast growing and they provide adequate screening, but also they have a larger uh, 
uh, vegetation along the bottom, and we're looking to screen the headlights of any of the cars that, is, uh, that would be parking there. So an effort to uh, minimize any of the adjoining Im impacts from vehicles that are not there today. These are the green giant uh, variety that are deer resistant. That is correct. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, continue. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry for the interruption. No. <laughs> the uh, I think it would be best if we went to Mr. Breland's report. I do. Let's start with four point one and four point two on page two. Yeah, the, one yeah, the only thing where, in terms of the AC units, we do not have them shown, but there's uh, patios directly behind the uh, the uh, units themselves. The AC units will be directly in the rear of the building, and they'll be consistent with what the existing uh, senior units have on the on those uh, buildings, which is the AC units directly behind the building itself. We are not proposing uh, generators uh, at this time. Uh, with the uh, with the units, um, exterior lighting. The exterior lighting uh, again. This will be residential in character. Uh, there will be lighting on the above the uh, the porches themselves in the back or the patios in the, in, in the back of the units. There will also be uh, lighting in the front uh, covered area. The architect will explain a little bit more about that. But it's uh, what is considered uh, what we'd all have on our own homes, uh, very similar uh, uh, exterior lighting that we would have uh, above the doorways and uh, for access into the units. In terms of the parking area, we have one pole mounted light uh, that's located in the middle of the, the nine parking spaces along the northerly side uh, of the site. That is a 15 foot high pole and it's also fitted with a, um, a house shield so that to screen uh, the, the actual fixture itself from being visible from the adjoining properties. Then uh, in terms of the parking spaces themselves uh, for the RSIS requirement, this is, uh, uh, we are proposing the four units because the fifth unit does not have a driveway also. If I you take the five units, uh, and uh, that RSIS requires 1.5 parking spaces per unit. Uh, that would be uh, 7.5 parking spaces would be required for this uh, project. Because there was already four parking spaces that were there, we are proposing 10. Uh, we're not, uh, we're just trying to, in case uh, there's a large gathering or something from one of the other residences, they have a place to park without needing to park on the street itself. So there's adequate parking that we're providing. We meet the RSIS requirements. In terms of the parking requirements uh, with RSIS, the uh, value of the 1.5 parking spaces per unit, that actually includes uh, visitor parking. So we are meeting that. Plus in addition to that, we are of the 10 parking spaces, we are providing two EV parking spaces with the development. And these will be uh, electric vehicle uh, spaces for charge. So the parking itself meets or exceeds all the RSIS requirements, correct? That is correct. We exceed the uh, RSIS requirements. As far as uh, managing solid waste and recyclables, it's basically a as already testified the continuation of what occurs now. It'll be exactly the same as today. They will be able to. Uh, today, the garbage is, and recycling is picked up uh, at the you know, at the individual units themselves, there'll be areas uh, adjoining on either side of the home so they can be able to put their cans uh, and recycle materials outside of the homes themselves. There's areas for that. And then they'd be able to brought, be brought out to the street for uh, uh, in the same fashion they are today. Can you explain the number of trees that are being removed at the Calvary location? That one just stumped me out. Now I got to look at the uh, camera. There are uh, 18 trees that are proposed to be removed. 
five trees are greater than 12 inches in diameter and uh, 13 trees are less than 12 inches in diameter. And then what we're proposing in, in, in place, we are proposing 23 uh, of the green giant arborvitae in place. Let's talk about the drainage aspects of the development. Yeah, the drainage pattern today for the uh, Hammerhead uh, area, the Hammerhead drains uh, uh, to the south. Uh, there's no drainage at the, uh, um, that is the highest portion of the site, as I mentioned before, the site is draining from north, north to south. Uh, we are reducing the size of the hammerhead, and then we're adding the parking spaces. Uh, in doing so, the asphalt area or the pavement area is almost matching the same in, in terms of the area itself. The runoff from the proposed uh, houses uh, or the uh, proposed units, that is being collected, and they are going to be piped to uh, seepage pits, one uh, on the western side of the property, one on the eastern side of the property. Then we're also proposing an overflow drains that will flow down to the existing drainage system on both the uh, east and west sides of, of the site itself. So, so, we're so we're we are meeting all the requirements in terms of uh, controlling the runoff from the uh, from the site itself. There's the not did report that the request for the installation should be designed to include an analysis of hydraulic impact and a maintenance plan to try to simulate that would be done. Yes, we can do that. Stipulate as pertains to uh, paragraph 4.11 through uh, 4.14. Uh, actually, we can go all the way down to uh, 4.15. That all has to do with the drainage system design. And those requests being made are basically standard provisions for any type of storm water management uh, condition that would be required for this type of development. Is that, that correct? That is correct. Turn to your attention at 4. Uh, Point 0.16. Yes, the, as I as I just testified, yeah. that there will be no uh, stormwater effect. Uh, there will the stormwater is designed so there will be no negative impacts on any of the adjoining properties themselves. Everything is being uh, directed and controlled on site, and and will match the current the existing drainage yeah. patterns of the site. In connection with 4.18, the applicant to ensure imported soil will be below applicable SAP state residential standards. Yes, we, uh, again, uh, we will, uh, at this point in time, any soil coming into the site, we don't know the source of it, where it would be coming from. Um, we would be, uh, make sure that we were, uh, that the soil is coming from a uh, adequate area and that it would not be a contaminated site. And other than foundations being constructed and of course the parking lot, there's no basis being proposed for these two constructions. No, actually, uh, we're, we have very little, uh, um, the, the cut and fill here, the soil movement is, is a small amount. Uh, because of the style of homes, they do not have basements, um, and the there's minor grading involved with the, uh, uh, the the construction of the nine parking spaces up to the north. Then directing your attention to item 4.20 through um, 4.25 on that page, can we stipulate to about six feet wide with? Well, one of them is the responsibility of the maintenance of the sewer. Presently, the the sewer is the ownership of the of the borough, um, and uh, they would. I can't stipulate that the borough is going to continue to maintain it, but uh, it, the ownership is the borough's responsibility. And so, uh, that uh, um, in terms of that, that's the only thing I can't stipulate. Yeah. And just so I can clarify my comment, part part of raising the comment was that that the Seaback Court is a private road. And um, as you're aware, you know, we sold the water system and we're going to be requiring easements for the water main or Violi is going to be requiring easements for the water main. And this may be an opportunity that if the sewer system is maintained by the borough, that maybe the borough should have an easement for maintenance of the sewer system. No problem. We have no problem with doing that. The uh, the site plan meets all of the uh, borough standards and all required RSIS standards. That is correct, it does. There's nothing further at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, I have no questions now. I want to turn it over. Anybody on the board, questions? I just got a quick question. Um, 
on the, the two family units, is it my understanding there's only going to be one water service and one sewer lateral? Like, there's, you're not separating them? It's just one per building? The way it shows, or is the way it shows right presently at the time? Um, is it going to be? I don't even, I'm, I'm not sure how they mean how they pay for the water or sewer. I'm just asking. Oh, uh, well, the sewer charges and stuff like that, that'll be. Uh, uh, Actually, I shouldn't say I know. I don't know how it's going to be done with the town. I can only tell you how it's going to be done with the sewage authority. Uh, how the town like charges, I don't know. Each unit should have their own utilities, or that's not how it's proposed? At the present time, when I drew it up, it was not proposed that way. Okay. But we may have to do it that way. And maybe the other ones are the same. Are, you, are the same. I just I didn't know. I, just, I saw one water line. And then one sewer lateral on each building. So I just, I just know how the uh, electric and telephone and cable they're paid individually by the unit owner by the unit. So okay, okay. so okay. each unit. So then there'll be four water services and four sewer laterals. Right. In other words, the proposal is to replicate what the other buildings exactly. currently have. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's, that's, that's okay. Fine. Thank you. Okay. I noticed the two spots, the EV spots. Are they? How 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 is all of that? I, it, I mean, I, it's not a it's not a no, you know, it's not a, a no deal kind of thing. But how how is something like that going to be maintained, worked? So Please. we have to provide EV parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So how it's going to be handled is basically the uh, because this is individual uh, power here to each of the units. We will either have to get a meter specifically for that, or we will have to somehow uh, compensate uh, the, the power from one or the other. Uh, internally, I can't tell you how we're going to do it, but I can tell you we are going to, someone's going to be charged for the power. And then we're going to have to, the person who is plugging their car in, they don't get that for free. There's going to be some type of car, a credit card ca transaction. And this is becomes... I don't know. <laughs> you guys going to raffle them off? You, mean, I, you know, it could be. A you know. Another law passed in Trenton. That, it, you know, it's, it's, you know we got to provide power. How okay. we get it there, but there's going to be a meter on those on that power, too. Okay. Michael, is it safe to assume that this is something that, as this is being built, yeah, I mean, you I, keep I, an eye on here? Or, again, or? you know, there's a... Do, there's laws out there that require certain things to go yep. in. Uh, this is one of those requirements and and kind of left up to the municipality to figure out how to make it happen. Okay. And this is residents only parking. Mm -hmm. park down mm -hmm. Okay. Again, I don't want to make, make a mountain out of a molehill here, but this is something new. No, it, <laughs> it's going to have to be figured out. We, okay. we will figure it out, but it's still like it's uh it's gonna be a higher authority than myself to tell you how it's gonna be done. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else on the board? Okay. I open up questioning to this witness on the testimony that you just heard or any questions that you may have for him. Okay. Sir? Yep. Come on, yeah, come on, come on up, please, sir. Thank you. Bruce Davis, 22 Mallinson Street. Yes, sir. Um, and I will tell you right off the bat. I'm, Excuse me one second. Linda, sure. you got it? Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Please. No, I'm just going to say I'm generally supportive of this project. I think it's a great effort. I like what I've seen so far. I only have one question. It's a real minor one, too. I only counted uh, 16 trees that are going to be reduced on the, the schematic. And I was just interested in where the trees were. How, some of the trees happened to find my property. I don't think they will affect it. Most of the trees that are being removed are uh, actually along the uh, uh, rural property line. Right. Yeah. I I, I saw and them, and, and they're 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 flagged and marked. So I just say uh, the count wasn't the same. Well, I'm not quite sure why it's like that. I can I'm just wondering where the other two trees were. That's all. That I can tell you. Yeah. Uh, but I do know that the real reason for most of the trees is the extension of the water main to the park. Uh, so we have to somehow get the water main back to the park because the uh, 
right now it, it, the, water, the extreme water main basically goes through uh, where the two buildings are and down the pavement area. Oh, no. So now, no, I, I, where where they were marked, they they make sense to me. I'm just questioning where the the other two were because a couple of trees I was interested in wanted to make sure they stayed. Yeah, if they're possible. No, no. If uh, the trees that we're going to be removing are because of the house or the two units in the parking area. Okay. okay. And just a general comment on the Arbor Fighties, I had to pull three of them out this year because the deer ate all the, the bottom <laughs> of them off. So I, I don't. I, I we can only try. <laughs> I know. I understand. You know, because. Uh, Thank you. We keep Thank you. adding more things we think the deer can. <laughs> we don't need the bigger ones. So definitely yeah. the eight to ten. Yeah. The smaller ones that we. Yeah, but the bigger ones, they might be a little too hard. So, okay. But you guys are all right. Uh, or truck. <laughs> anybody else from the public uh, to comment on our questions for this witness? Okay. Oh, ma'am, please. Thank you. Hi. Just a, your state your name, please. Nancy Callenberg's 58 Mallinson Street. Thank you. B A U W E N B E R G H S. Should be well known here. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've been living in our house on Mountain Street for years, close to 40 years. And so um, I'm very familiar with how it's been going. I'm very supportive of this. This is great. But I do have a couple of questions. The parking that you're talking about, where is that specifically located? The additional nine spot? Uh, white and shaded gray area. Oh, all in there. Yeah. There's nothing that's going to happen on the other side on First Street. Way down here. Nothing's going to be touched. No, we're there. not touching anything. The only, the only reason we I colored the right hand side of the road this side of the property. That's where all the work is going to be done. Okay. All right. Because um, the other side, uh, having lived there for so long and watching children coming and going to school, it would be really nice if at some point something can happen in that whole section because it is it's dangerous at times. It's, I don't know if anything was thought about to, to do anything in that section. Um, just that one comment. Um, if you look at all the trees that are missing <laughs> along the one side that's our property um and the missing because we asked the town to take down the trees because they became so overgrown that we weren't able to use our backyard that was so um overgrown so you know maybe you want to think of another tree <laughs> that's all oh the other question i had for you is when these went in years ago that whole pathway was done with a, a block, a cinder block. So there would be access from for emergency services, if I'm not mistaken. Um, has that gone by the wayside or that's that's a a, a block with the holes in the center? Just, you know, if so they're that, there, I don't know about it. I have the original site plan from uh nineteen ninety four. It did not show it on the site plan, so I wasn't aware. Oh, because I, I know that was all put in so that there would be an, an extra emergency access. If, if uh, there was, I don't, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. Does it, uh, I don't care, does it fit into um, required safety protocol? That's all I'm concerned about. Now, the, uh, the, the cul-de-sac itself, uh, we, I believe the cul-de-sac meets the RSIS requirement and the turnaround and the turnaround. Okay. So I'm not sure that it does. Cool. They get in and out very well. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public have any questions for this witness, please? Okay. Uh, seeing none, Michael, I throw it to you. Do you have? Any questions, items that you'd like to discuss? No, I, I think uh, Mr. Hall did a good job going through the comments in my report, and picked up on the, the questions that I raised in the report and provided that as a testimony. I, I don't have any further questions at this point. Okay, all right. 
Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your time and your testimony. Thank you. Okay. My next week is very good time. Hello. Please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the course of this application? I do. All right. Name and address, the Mary record. Mary Fitzpatrick Scrove, uh, 240 West Crescent Avenue, C plus architect. Okay. Qualified, I know it was advised before you, and I was just asking if there's a big change in your qualifications since the last time you were qualified as an expert. Nothing's changed. So yes, so accepted. Thank you. Thank you. you. Just give us an overview of what's being proposed. Sure. Um, long enough. <laughs> Mark is the same break. So there's going to be two buildings. Each building will have two units. Um, the square footage of the building is 1,436, so 718 square feet per building. Um, we're matching um, the general aesthetic that is there. There are two um, changes to the building. These buildings will be slab on grade, so there will be um, no steps. It increases the accessibility for the residents. Um, and the bathrooms have also become larger because the codes have changed since the original construction of the other building. Um, the exterior material will be uh, asphalt roof shingles, vinyl siding. Um, as far as lighting goes on the buildings, we will have recessed lights um, at the front porch and at the back door, um, a wall sconce uh, to meet requirements of code having light outside of each door. Um, the units are one bedroom. There's an open living, kitchen, family room area, and um, a utility room with laundry and oversized accessible bathroom in each unit. And then the previous um, rendering just helped illustrate the, the overall aesthetic. Okay. So just for the record, if you just go back and just show the rendering itself, yeah. this is what each of the units will look like. You see traditional nature very in keeping with what's there now. And the dormers are the for aesthetic at the, at the front of the building. There is just it's just attic space, not useful space. Board members, questions? Yeah. Um, Please. The um you said there there's not gonna be any steps, but the bathrooms are yeah. all eight. It looks like they're ADA accessible, yeah. right? Are the counter heights going to be also 34 inches? Or yeah. Okay, so yep. everything's going to be kind of completely fully accessible. Okay. Yep. Good. Good. Real. And um, maybe you should ask uh, Mr. Hall, but <laughs> the AC units. Are they going to be out the back like the other ones I saw? Yes, yeah, they'll be out in the back. Yep. One for each. Yep. Basically, the outward look that's currently there, basic locations yes. are all the same, replicating the previous two. Right. The major aesthetic change is that the, the porch is not elevated anymore. Okay. I'm going to open it to the public. Uh, again, questions for this witness only on the testimony that you just heard. Okay. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to first Michael. Anything? No, I have, I have no questions. Okay, thank you. I bring it back to the board. Okay. Thank you very much. So that concludes our directory. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm going to open this up now to the public for any general comments on the testimony that you just heard. Um, please feel free to come up. 
Okay. Seeing none. Okay. Board members, questions, comments. All right. Mr. Okay. Chairman, then the, Good, a very brief summation. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. As I stated in my opening, your master plan encourages the development of senior citizen housing within the borough of Allendale. This meets the requirement of the master plan. Uh, we meet all of the uh, zoning requirements that do exist as it pertains to density. Um, and on the basis of that, um, the two additional units uh, meet all of the requirements from an engineering and architectural perspective. And on the basis of that, with the parking spaces that are proposed, uh, we're seeking preliminary and final site plan approval. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, um, our next step now is to have a motion to vote on this with a second and proceed from there. So I ask for a motion on the application that we just heard. I'll make a motion. Thank uh, you. To approve the application by the way it stands. Okay. Do I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. And the resolution as presented would just, um, you know, for preliminary and final site plan approval and this include the stipulations that have been placed on the record by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Linda, I can, we can proceed with the roll call then, please. Uh, roll, I'm sorry, vote, please. Thank you. Vice Chair Bergen? Yes. Board Member Petrino? Yes. Chairman Chirico? Yes. Alternate Marvell? Yes. Alternate Buffer? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Thank Good work. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Whitaker, you're still here, right? Bruce, you're, you're still here, right? Okay. All right. I am going to. Very efficient. I'm wow. trying to be, you know? Wow. Okay. I'm going to move to the, uh, the next agenda item, please. Okay. Keep it going. Yeah, our next agenda right here. Our next agenda item is file number LUB 2023-06. Uh, Barry Pos Poskans, I hope I said that right, sir. I apologize. Thank okay. you. Uh, 40 Carteret Road, Allendale, New Jersey, 07401, block 1503.01, lots 15 and 14. We're looking for a minor subdivision, which basically is a realignment of a lot line. Evening, Mr. Chairman, members Thank of the board. Again. For the record, Bruce Whitaker from the firm of McDonald Whitaker. I couldn't say it any easier than what you just did. There is no new lot being created by this. Uh, we have two lots now, and if the subdivision is approved, and it's kind of a play on words, it's under the guise and definition of subdivision in the municipal land use law, but it's basically a realignment of a lot line. It requires planning board jurisdiction to review it to ensure that there are no uh, variances or exceptions to uh, the requirements for your subdivision ordinance. As you've seen in the outline that I presented to you with part of the application, we will have lot areas for both lots that are in the AA residential zone that far exceeds uh, the minimum requirements, both in area as well as in dimensions, uh, by um, creating a revised lot line, a realignment, if you will. The homestead lot, the home that has a house on it now, just becomes larger, and the other property uh, that would be vacant uh, far exceeds uh, what the requirements are for that zone. 
uh, on the basis of what we are proposing. There is no construction or anything else being proposed, merely just a reconfiguration of the lot line. My application also states that there are certain uh, stipulations that we are making as far as deed restrictions for that vacant lot. They're basically a private restriction, but I wanted to just place them on the record in, in the application itself. For instance, you have a 50-foot setback. Uh, we are proposing uh, to, on that lot, have a restriction of 100 as a front yard setback. Why? So it, re so it aligns with the other homes that are along that side of the roadway. So Mr. Postkanza, for those of you who don't know who was the property owner, is a well-known, well-respected architect for many years in Bergen County, and this is the property he owns. And so when he reviewed this and looked at this and we created uh, this application, we put these other types of stipulations in, including the non-disturbance and the uh, uh, setback that we're proposing for a buffer on the side yard and also where garages can be located. Uh, those are not enforceable by the planning board, but rather would be enforceable privately on the deed itself. And that's basically some in substance of the application. Thank you. Thank you. Or you have any testimony? I don't think I need yeah, testimony. I, I was going to say, you're going to really yeah. don't. No. Okay. I mean, I can have Mr. Post to say what I said is correct, but that's about it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Michael, so please. We reviewed the application and visited the site. Um, and based on the information that we provided, was provided to us, and then we reviewed two conforming lots. Uh, we put together a brief memo dated uh, June 3rd, um, where we wanted to make sure that there was no confusion in, in the future because the code has an enhanced side yard setback requirement based on the building envelope, not just a 20 foot minimum side yard requirement. Um, and then and ask for some other technical information uh, with regard to the lots and closure calculation. Uh, the applicant surveyor actually sent us a package on September 7th. I think addressing all those items, we haven't had a chance to re-review it, but I just wanted the board to know that they have uh, agreed to address everything and provided us information that appears to address all those comments. We will stipulate for that. And that note on the enhanced side yard setback was at, appears to be added to the amended plan already. Okay. <laughs> I'll bring it back to the board. Any questions from anybody on the board? So a simple question. What, what is the reason for the change? Is there some, I'm not sure you have to explain, but I'm just curious, what was the reason for the change? Well, you have a homestead lot, and Mr. Postcancer loves his home. He's been in a number of years. I can speak for him, I think. Uh, he's a gardener, so he likes his garden, and he likes his landscaping. So he's got two lots there now. He just wanted to make his larger. Hey, you just answered the question I was going to ask. I mean, I think it's I think it's great what you want to do, but I noticed that you had some plantings there. So I'm assuming you're going to plant on the other side as well. Yeah, go but ahead. Go I, ahead. again, that's just yeah. a curious thing on my part. <laughs> Happy you're curious. Um, do we need to do any? Or is this yeah. free? To, I guess I guess so. We, we just, might as well. All right. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, through the course of this application? I do. All right. Name and address? Barry Postkanzer. 40 Carteret Road in Allendale. The answer to the question is that when we originally developed the street 40 years ago, we did all 12 lots, promised the town we would never have more than 12 lots, even though it was zoned for 18 or 20 at the time. So for background, just when you use the word we, just explain what that means. You develop this property. Right. I, I was, it was the San Jacinto Swim Club was defunct and it was an available piece of property and I developed the street. <clears throat> Excuse me. And over time, how the rest of the street developed has changed. And there are other styles of architecture and there are other locations. And <clears throat> we just I looked at the map. I was walking around my office and realized that the shape of the two and a half acres that was adjacent to my property was really part of what I had once thought I would build another house on that lot and sell the one I'm in. I decided I wasn't going to do that. And so I decided to try to develop some more protection between the two lots. And so the additional space that I'm adding to my lot is actually for the purpose of having undeveloped space between the new house that will be there someday, I guess, and my house and the people who will live in it someday. So it's just there for the purpose of making a nicer separation between the two properties. 
The 100 foot yard mark, I should tell you, is because the one house that was added after there was a fire at 36 Carteret was on the 50 foot setback and is obtrusive when you drive around the block. It just doesn't fit the way good planning ought to have been done. So I was disappointed that that had been done. And I thought, well, at least I can protect the property next door to right. mine. Thank you. Thank okay. you for that. Because all the other properties all are, the other are properties, about 100 back. When right? I built all the other houses, they were 75 to 150 mm -hmm. feet back. Mm -hmm. uh, because remember, it's zone AA, but we were really building AAA mm -hmm. uh, sites and setbacks and things throughout. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for asking. Thank you, for the you. Thank you for the explanation. <laughs> Again, in satisfying the curiosities. Okay. And so, I knew he was a gardener because when he came to the office, he brought me cucumbers that he there you go. They were good. So. There, you, there you go. If you look on the map and see this entire area yes. on this side, those are raised vegetables. So when I first looked at this, I said, okay, he's going to grow vegetables on the other side yeah. too. So, okay. Um, all right. I think we can go to a vote. Uh, with whatever has been agreed to from Michael, whatever questions were there. Okay. So, does anybody for a go minor on. subdivision? Uh, Thank you. Stipulations on the record. So, anyone makes a motion? Okay. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Second. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Vice Chairwoman Bergen? Yes. Board Member Pistino? Yes. Board Member Dallow? Yes. Chairman Sirico? Yes. Mayor Wisinski? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you again for the explanation. Thank you again. Thank you for taking that. Thank Barry? Okay. And next on our agenda, application number LUB 2023-09, Giuseppe and Alexandria DePinto, 20 Stone Fence Road, Allendale 0701, Block 1503, Lot 16. And we are looking at a single story rear addition to the kitchen and dining area pursuant to code 270-34A2. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I just want to put on the record for the board, uh, I have reviewed the mailings and the proof of uh, publication. Uh, they are sufficient for the purposes of the municipal land use law and therefore the board does have jurisdiction to hear and act upon this application tonight. Perfect, thank you, sir. Okay. So, please. Good evening. Go, uh, go name, ahead. Name. Oh, you got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Bett. I'm the architect. Um, my office is Michael A. Bett, architect in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Uh, 201 East Ridgewood Avenue, Sweet Bray. Okay. The last name right. spelled B E T, like you bet on a horse. Got it. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the course of this application? I do. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Would you mind just just giving us all of your background credentials, just so we have it on the record, please? No problem. Thank you. Um, I'm a graduate of Fordham University with a, a, a degree in communications, as well as a graduate from Pratt Institute with a degree in architecture. I've been a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey since 2005. I've been in front of a board similar to Allendale, not in Allendale, but similar to Allendale, uh, Union City, Wyckoff, uh, Teaneck. Um, and my license is currently okay. You're accepted in the field of uh, architecture for the purpose of this application. Thank you. An expert. Thank you. All right. Tell us what you're going to do. Okay. Um, as as stated in, I'm going to refer to my notes. I hope you don't mind. Um, as stated in a the bur, a bur referendum dated uh, June 28, 2003, uh, the required setback based on the proposed additional square footage to the building is uh, 
enhanced, so it's 21.78 feet at the uh, building's east elevation. And and currently we're at, I believe it's right now we're already uh, the existing dwelling is 19.5 feet where 20 is required. Correct. It's an existing nonconformity. It was 20. We're 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 adding to the uh, building, so the the enhancement kicks in, and it required a uh, 21.78 setback. As opposed to the nineteen point, as opposed to the twenty foot. Okay. Um, when Mister when Mister and Mrs. DePinto uh, purchased the home, they had two children. Since then, the family has increased by one. Uh, the increase in family size is a large reason for the addition and the uh, alteration in the interior. Uh, the proposed addition is three hundred and thirty five square feet with a uh, new 240 foot square foot wood deck. Uh, the design includes um, combining the existing dining room and kitchen areas to create an open floor plan concept. The proposed wood deck would allow for not only the enjoyment of the outdoors and access from the kitchen, as well as providing access from an elevated floor, floor area level to the lower exterior patio, eliminating the need to travel from the kitchen area down interior steps through a bonus room into a patio. We would we would avoid kitchen. coming through the kitchen area down into the bonus room and out. Are all those all right. in the application? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. The, yeah, but the, 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 the site the, plan the was site in the application. The one you were just showing. The first one. We just have yeah. a very muddled, <laughs> fuzzy copy of a land survey, but not the detailed one that you showed. That one. I don't know if you have any copies of that. Or share. I have I have this copy science. right here. Okay. Without, yeah. I'm sorry, I, go ahead. Sorry. I have this copy right here, but I can provide more if the board requires it. That won't be a problem. That's it, right? This, this is it. Yeah. Okay. Right. There is a there's a there's You want me to bring it closer? Yeah, can we take a yeah, look at it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is the board is the board accepting of looking yeah, I mean, no at this from here? Okay. And I don't have the digital copy. Do they have to mark that? No. Can we mark this as a a one? Okay. Yeah. That's, what do you, that's just so that's the that survey this. on your um uh plans. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But there's a there's a if you would look at the table. Yeah. The table. It's a little more detailed. Yeah. Well, I mean. Or it's a little, it's a little more legible. Like legible, right? Because right. this is difficult to read. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can't. There's there's side. Because my comments are based on letters and some observations where where I was coming in with the numbers. Okay. All right. So, so one more. That's sheet so. G O dot one. We'll uh, mark it Exhibit A one. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Because again, even the the uh, what appears to be the envelope is also encompassed. I mean, we don't see that on here. Right. Okay. The line of step at all that it's not on there. Okay. Great. Right. So that's why. Um, all right, board members, you need to please. Do you okay. Yeah. That's great. All right. So again, I see just 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 saying one more time what 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 you have here is that this the right setback is noted to be half a foot less than the required twenty feet of the existing structure. Yes. Because of the work that you're doing, it now goes up 
because uh, and it enhances the side yard setbacks at 21.78 feet. Okay. Yes. But again, the footprint of the home is not in that area is not changing. You're not changing anything that gets into that. The, the basic footprint is staying, with the exception of the deck. With okay. the and the deck and the uh, the addition is uh, three hundred thirty-five square sorry. feet. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It, it's it's possible that you know the, the house is is skewed from the property line, so it yes. runs away from the property line. Right. I mean, it is possible that a portion of that addition may be within that twenty-one foot setback. I. I I can't tell. It's hard to tell. It's hard to here. tell. Right. Yeah. But the addition is no closer to the side property line than the existing foundation. Than the existing foundation. That's thank you for explaining what I was trying to say. Thank you. Better than I could uh, say. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Um, I, I'm I'm going to. Uh, do you have any other testimonies you'd like to add to that at all before I bring in um, for questions from the board? I, I, it pretty much just explains that the, what the Depentos are going to do. It's going to be frame construction. It's gonna, not going to be anything extraordinary being done. Uh, they intend to remove and replace the siding um, and, and just make it look updated and more homogenous. Because okay. We don't want, we really are looking to avoid seeing the difference between the addition and the existing home. And, and the home. We want it seamless. And. I trust that you reviewed the uh, letter from our engineer. I did. Okay. Um, is there anything or any discussion on any of the matters here? No, or we're not removing any trees. The uh, addition is almost twice the uh, distance from the requirement for an, an ex 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 accessory building. Um, and any any kind of lighting is going to be functional and decorative, but we're not going to ble look to bleed into any of the uh, adjoining properties. And again, no changes, no changes to the pool, any of the patio. No the shed remains in the same place. Shed's going to be in the same place. The only the only alteration to the existing patio is where the addition is going to be. We'll have to remove a bit of that. Okay. Board members, questions? So just uh, just so I understand the addition, if you're gonna, ex if there's an existing basement, you're gonna extend the footprint of the basement uh, basically to be equal to size of the new addition, right? Correct, correct. And then it's only one story? Yes. And the elevations kind of just, I guess they look like from front to back, they do slightly, they slightly grades down the property? Away from the home, yes. And there's a basement too that you're defending in the. the there's an existing basement. It's a typical split level from the 1960s, so it's slab on grade and a basement. Um, we're looking to add to to the existing basement, just based on the location for where the addition is going to go. Gotcha. Sorry, okay. no problem. You. And then, <laughs> what do you? What is? Is there anything proposed with the uh, leaders? Are they going to be tied into some type of? Um, seepage system or are they just going to pour out I mean you have one I guess on the east elevation right at the corner what's what is, is there anything proposed there because it's pretty close to the window well it, based based on the size of the addition we weren't planning on creating a new dry well we were going to have the leader an existing one uh no not that I'm aware of um again and the house is built in the 60s so even if there was one existing, I, I, I'm not sure if it would be functional right now. So right now, you just have them uh, draining just to the right, I guess, near the foundation. Correct. It would go three feet beyond. I have a question. The survey that you have, is there any topo shown at all? No, it was a, uh, a just a regular site survey. It was no topographic going on. So the property slopes, to, to, to John's point, the property slopes front to back some, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so any new runoff would see or potentially would go towards the back. Towards, towards the rear of the building. The rear of the building. Yeah. 
So we would, you know, in our comments, your the comments board, right. board approved this, you know, we would require a plot plan. And at that point, you know, we would look at topo stormwater calculations to make sure that there's no net increase in, in runoff from the additional purpose cover. And that could be done during? We would normally ask for that after board approval as part of the building process. Okay. And you would agree to that? Yeah, we'll agree to that. Whatever's, whatever's needed that our engineer requires. And that's really, you know, item 4.7.1. Yeah, actually, I was going to have you go through here yeah. anyway, so maybe we were getting ahead. Um, John, you can I, can I have Michael address or you have another question? Right? No, that, that, that addresses what I was doing. Okay. Um, all right, Michael, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you address yes. whatever's in you know what what you need yes. to in the letter. So, you know, we back. We do the information. We visited the site, and the, the property is relatively flat around around the building. Um, it didn't appear uh, that the addition would be really visible from the street. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what your opinion is, but you know, given the roof lines it, um, and, and the configuration of the addition, you know, we didn't anticipate that to really change the streetscape. Mm -hmm. um, like I said previously, the uh, existing house is in parallel with the side property line. It's angled away from the property line, so the addition will be located further from the property line, mm -hmm. although there's an infraction on the side road setback. Um, as if I understood the testimony correctly, the, the uh, perp, uh, the goal was to uh, recite a house and make the addition look seamless to, to the rest of the house. Uh, I, I assume similar colors that the house is finished out there now. Yeah. Uh, it sounded like uh, it was going to be just residential lighting in nature, with no floodlights or spotlights or anything that would be obnoxious to any of the neighbors. Um, we did ask uh, if a, a copy of the survey could be provided for the board secretary's file. And if this was to be approved, grading and stormwater management in accordance with the soil movement and plot plan sections of the ordinance would be required. Um, I don't believe it would raise to the level of needing Burton County soil uh, certification, but with the disturbance, we would recommend that tracking pad and silt fence and those appropriate type measures be right. installed. And we would also recommend, if this was approved, that uh, an as built plan be required uh, to demonstrate that it meets the setbacks that board, the board would grant uh, the variances for. Okay. Can you and and we have no problem working with the building department and providing whatever they need. Okay. A lot of times we ask the applicant that, you know, work with the a borough engineer in the field, if there are any modifications to stormwater management that need to be addressed in the field, then you would agree to do that, right? Of course. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Okay. Do I have any other questions from uh, from the board? Okay. Um, everybody understands what we're voting on here, correct? Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, public, any questions? I don't see anybody out there, so I'm going to bring it back. Okay, back to the board again. So you're seeking comments? just one variance uh, for the side yard. And uh, I think uh, you could probably kind of put on the record here that your your hardship that you're looking for or looking at is that the house is kind of angled in a uh, uh, offset way in the property lot the lot in the back actually the lot line is not perpendicular do you agree with that i agree 100 percent. yes sure thank you okay so um board members uh make a motion for approval so moved thank you mayor second no second thank you Okay. Linda, please. Chairwoman, Chairwoman Bergen? Yes. Board member Petrino? Yes. Board member Dallow? Yes. Chairman Sarita? Yes. Mayor Wisinski? Yes. President Lozano? Yes. President Butler? Yes. Okay.
have. Thank you very much. I appreciate so, it. So yeah. just the process next month, there'll be a resolution on this. Okay. Um, yeah. And then you, know, you go through whatever permitting, but yep. we recommend you wait until next month. Not a problem. Okay. You got and that it. meeting next month is the 20th. 19th. The meeting is October 18th. 18th. Okay. Thanks again. All right. Appreciate All right. it. Good luck. Thank you again. Thank you. Board members, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Perfect. All right. Um, I open the meeting now to the public for any comments, additions, anything else. Okay. Seeing none, I bring it back to the board. Uh, any other business as we uh, usually do? Are there any updates there? Yeah, we have an update actually. We um, accepted all of our bids for cool. the community center. So now it's in the lawyer's hands to go through uh, everything. So we have um, the three low bidders that they're going to go through all their paperwork to make sure we pass. Okay. We should know in a couple weeks. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Anything else? I just I just want to say that uh, usually a couple times a week I'm going down there. It, it looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, it's starting okay. to shape up. I can't wait for the road to be fixed, though. Yep. <laughs> okay. um, all right, any other comments from the board? Okay, I um, just want to say to everybody, this is unusual that we had a Monday night meeting, but Linda and I discussed this. There were a few things that we felt that we had to get done tonight also people's schedules. There is another meeting on Wednesday night. So please, I, I hope that we're all, Linda's gotten who's going to be there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, I thank you guys all for your time. Okay. And that's it. Uh, Linda, can I uh, motion to close the meeting? All in favor, aye. All in favor, aye. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Thank you. <laughs>